G'day guys, uh, welcome to my shed. <laughs> it's a bit echoing in here, so we'll see how we go. Today I'm going to uh, build an arrow spine tester, just because they're expensive to buy online and they're pretty easy to make. So I'll take you through what you need and how to do it, and hopefully you can have a weekend project yourself at home and build something a bit cool and kind of interesting. I'm gonna make a um, really basic one here. Uh, you can make them as pretty as you want. Uh, and yeah, all right, so check it out. And she's atrocious at the moment. It's covered in sawdust and metal shavings, but that's all right. So this is what you're gonna basically need. You're gonna need a board that is at least 30 inches long. You're gonna need a ruler, an arrow to test, a pen, uh, a pen or a pencil, tape measure, uh, and a couple of little pitcher hooks like this. Just make sure that the pitcher hooks are wide enough to fit around your arrow shaft. So if they're, if the pitcher hooks are too small, then you need to go and buy something else. You can use bits of dowel or uh, nails as well. So either either will be fine. Just make sure that they fit around that. You're so the first thing we're going to do uh, is explain a little bit about how an arrow spiner works. Basically, 99.99% of the time it is an arrow suspended by two points exactly 26 inches apart uh, with a two pound weight hung from the center of that arrow. So the first step that we need to do is measure 26 inches on our board. Now I don't take it from the very edge. I've already marked out the lines, I haven't drawn them on just yet. But now, 26 inches, I'm not taking the measurement from this edge, I'm going from three inches in, measuring 26 inches up towards the other end, uh, and I'll have a little bit of space in the end of the board. And then what I do is I mark the zero line, the 13 inch line, and the 26 inch line. They're my first markings, so I'll draw them up now, and then show you guys exactly what that looks like. Right, so, yeah, get a little bit closer. That's my middle line, that's my 13 inch line, my zero line, and my 26 inch line. That's your first step, that's all you've got to do for that. Really, really easy, nice and peasy. So, next step. The next step is we're going to put the hooks in. So all we're going to do is put these hooks in at the zero line and the 26 inch line. They've got to be level and they've got to be exactly 26 inches apart. So that's your first proper measurement that you've got to make sure. Make sure they're exactly 26 inches apart. The hooks you don't want going in on any kind of angle and they've got to be um, so your arrow will be away from the board. This is why I like the hooks because I can screw that hook in and it's going to give me that much adjustment. So I've actually got a bit of play where I can get the arrow so it sits uh, straight and level with the board and even. I'll show you exactly what I mean. All right, so first thing first, drill. <laughs> we'll put a little pilot hole in, shall we? Now these are just pitcher hooks, so they're not um, expensive hooks to pick up. I literally scrounged around in my um, Bits box. So, with your um, with your ruler, what I want to do is I'm going to measure down about two inches from the top of the board on my zero and twenty-six inch line, and that will be where I place my uh, pitcher hooks. So, I'll tell you exactly how big it's going to be. I'll even show you actually. Come over here, guys. Look at this. All right. So. Measurement's nice and even with the top of the board from zero, I'm gonna put it uh, three centimeters down. So right on that three centimeter line is where I'm gonna put both my pitcher hooks. So I'm gonna put one there and one up on this line here. Give it a couple of uh, test drives. Now we're not going all the way in or through the board. I'm just gonna put a very small, I'll get down low so you can see my face. I'm gonna put a very small hole in just so the pitcher hook will go in. Um, and not drill all the way through the board. Right, now for the fun part, putting this in. Easy way to make sure that these are even is to do the same amount of twists. So you can't your twists uh, pretty much exactly the same as what you do with, like with a recurve string, is that you just start twisting and count as you go. So put one in, twist. That's two, three, four, 
five, six. So I'm going to go six twists in. Because you've got a line there, you can make sure it's nice and even. So that's handy. Had a bit of a malfunction there, guys. That's all right. Oh, we got we got the camera working again. All right. So I um, got the arrow in. This is the main thing. Now, this is what she we shall look like. Arrow comes up. Press in there. Suspended between two points. Now, adjusting this camera. Hey, there we go. There we go. So now it's suspended like this and it can't go anywhere, it's nice and secure, it's not going to fall out and most importantly it can't roll. If you use bits of dowel and nails, when you rest the arrow down on top of them it can roll off and that's just not that handy. So, show you a bit of a close up. That's how the arrow is going into the um, picture hook. So, as with most good inventions, I got about halfway through that build and realized that uh, well, I had a brainwave that I could do this a slightly different way. So. Now normally the way I measure the spine deflection is on the back of that bit of wood I attach a, a two or three inch bit of wood or steel or a hinge or a bracket or something like that that you can attach a caliper to and what you do is you put your arrow in, you put your weight on and then um, well, before you put your weight on, the, the caliper's just resting on top of the arrow. It's just barely touching the top of the arrow. Then you put your weight on, the arrow moves away, and then you measure the deflection, the, the change in distance between where the caliper is and where the arrow is sitting now, and then you run that against the spine chart, and you get your spine. But I realized I could do exactly the same thing with a ruler uh, without having to go and buy a caliper. So I could make this thing completely free. What, I'm, um, what I've done is I went online and I went to downloadaruler.com <laughs> And I, I've tested against an actual ruler, and it's pretty damn accurate, actually. It's exactly accurate, and it's just a bit of paper. That's it, and it prints out out of your computer off a PDF file. It's free. Um, I cut it out with a razor blade, and now what I'm going to do is just glue it to my board. Uh, and what I can do then is I can, this way, um, no matter what arrow I put on, I can just look at the measurement that's where it's sitting, mark it off or write it down, and then put my weight on, watch the deflection, and record that, and then I'll get my um, I'll get my change. And it's going to be on the board permanently, and I don't have to go and buy a caliper. So that's a really handy thing. So I'm going to glue that down. <laughs> right, so welcome to my kitchen. Um, we've come in here to make the weight. Now, there's tons of different ways you can do it. Uh, one of the cool ways to do it is to get uh, lead fishing weights or car tire balances, and just melt them down on a little gas stove outside. Make sure you've got lots of ventilation, because you know, lead's not great for your health. Uh, and then uh, you put them into a tuna can and you measure it up to 906 grams uh, or two pounds. So that's the goal weight. Now I don't have any lead, with, yeah, lead fishing weights at the moment, so I just use rocks from my garden in a plastic bag. And we'll see how close we got. Now I've adjusted and fiddled with this a little bit, as you can see with water. Water is another way of just getting it to balance out with your grams. And it weighs now, 910 grams, so I'll probably take out just a couple of rocks and stuff from that um, and then I'm going to run just a string around the top of the bag and tie one of my uh, hooks to it to hang from the arrow and that way uh, I've got my weight then to test my spine with. Right, so that's that done. Okay guys, I think I'm running out of battery so I'll make this really quick. We've finished up our arrow spiner. Basic, basic quick rundown, you've got your board with two hooks uh, set 26 inches apart, you mark your middle line, you hang your arrow on that, and I've got a ruler stuck to it so I can measure the deflection in millimeters. Now, you actually, when you work out spine, you need your deflection in inches. So what you've got to do is this, really simple mathematical formula. You put your weight on your arrow, it'll deflect down, so say it deflects 10 millimeters, because that's easy math to work out. You've then got to times 10 millimeters by 0 0.03937. If you times it by that, you will get your um, arrow spine in inches. So, you know, if you've got a 450 arrow spine, you'll need 12 or 13 millimeters of deflection. So, the easiest way to do this is to get your weight, which is quite, again, quite ugly, but that's all right, it works quite well. Hang it on the dead center of the line, make sure your weight isn't touching anything on the ground and your arrow will bend like that. Now, I've already measured this, it was 27 millimeters down from the top um, originally, and it deflects exactly 10 millimeters, which means my arrow spine is 30, uh, 0.39, 
Uh, seven, uh, which is really close to 400, which is exactly what it is. These have been shortened down to 27 inches, so there's a good chance that this spine is just a little bit stiffer um, than what it said. Now this is obviously, there's a whole heap of different types of arrow spine, but this is the way to measure your shaft weights. So I hope that you, this has been really informative. I've got uh, just the instructions and the materials written up at the end of this video. And remember guys, if you like it and I've helped you out a little bit, make sure you like the video, uh, give it a share it around and check us out on Facebook. So once again, thanks for watching guys. I've enjoyed making this. I'm gonna to have to name it now. I think I'll call it Ugly Betty or something. We'll maybe stain it up and make it a little, look a little bit prettier. <laughs> so thanks for watching. And I'll catch you next time. See you later.